Hello, this is an overview of the induction session we run for students, both new students and returners for the 2012-2013 academic year. I've removed so this video um, just goes through some of the key points uh, which you would normally go through in the face-to-face, -face, but I have removed the interactive questions, um, so it would just be a set of slides and then a talk over. So this is innovative technology to enhance your learning. The aims are to raise your awareness of some learning technologies you encounter at UCS and the support mechanisms. We're also really interested, and probably more interested, when you look at where we, the weighting within the within this presentation, of looking at how you might use technologies that exist that aren't necessarily part of the UCS um, suite of software suite to enhance your learning. So you taking a bit of responsibility or an opportunity to take responsibility over enhancing your using technologies to enhance your learning. Um, it's very much the session is this is an induction, an introduction type session, so it's about planting ideas and trying to make you help you make appropriate decisions in the future. So there isn't sort of any real hard, fast stuff coming from it in that sense. Though we do go through some institutionally owned software. And there are two um, that we pick on. Though we owe, we, we owe, there's more institutionally owned e-learning software than just these two. The one we look at is the, the Learn UCS and Mahara, uh, which is the e-portfolio. And we've kind of ca categorised them in two different ways. The Learn UCS is very much about, or very much about the, the lecturer. It's associated with being used in a much more of a formal learning structured sense. They control it. They pretty much control what the course looks like. They can control the content. They can control the activities. Um, and they decide, in fact, if they're going to use it or not. So this is very much a, they own the space um, and you come in to participate and, and, and undertake certain activities to, within their learning design. It's hopefully being used more and more in a blended manner, um, and I'll come on to that in a tickle. So you should get exposed to um, Learn UCS, and the URL is there. Mahara, though, is the way we differentiate. We kind of view Mahara as, as the portfolio, so it's really about you. You own it. There isn't any structure there in terms of using other records, like student record systems or whatever, to to dictate what the name of modules are or interaction. There's no modules. There's no formal learning going on within it. This is a social learning space. It's informal. It's you control it. It's your individual space within it. You can even open it up to people outside of UCS and start sharing what you're doing there. So. These two tools um, are institutionally owned but used in completely different ways. And I think from the student's perspective, it's very much to think Learn UCS is being is much more within the structured learning, as I say, lecturer controlled. And Mahara, on the other hand, is you control it, though it is being used in parts of assessment. So a little bit more about Learn UCS. Well, the key points, if you've not met it before, if you're a return, of course, you would have known under the Woolsey. Um, brand, but now we rebranded on the Learn UCS, which fits the My UCS for the intranet. So there's Learn UCS. The URL is learn.ucs.ac.uk. You use your usual uh, UCS credentials and details. Your normal username and password. The thing I suppose that we 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 plug in away here is that <clears throat> where do you go for help? Well, in terms of going for help, you'll find that the email best route is everything. We go through the info zone, and they'll pass. Uh, or escalate up information to us. Alternatively, you actually ask your lecturer or your course administrator because they've got a really, the course administrator especially got a really important role to play within this. We provide a number of FAQs, so to start with the start of the academic year before the new and in your systems are deployed, it's under faq.ucs.ac.uk. You will find a section for learning the UCS student um, and that's where we contain many, many um, different FAQs about at this stage in terms of how do you manage your notifications, how do you personalise it uh, and then later on when you start to use it for certain tasks within the academic life cycle such as online submission or use of wikis or wikis for assessment, collaboration then you'll find a set of FAQs that support that. If you've not had a chance to look at it before or seen it before in its previous incarn incarnations we would advise you to go to that YouTube video youtube.be that little bit baby there and that's something that we put together or I put together myself on kind of overviews it from the first page in we don't really go on to, in, in any great depth to it because 
it all looks different once you go into the My Modules, which is the list of all your modules. So Learn UCES is what we call a, a walled garden. You can get onto it because you're a member of the university. People who aren't members of the university can't. You can, when you go into it, you'll see a set of course learning spaces that associate with your module codes, and that's those codes are determined by what's in in SIT's student record system. You can only access them if you're enrolled on the course, and therefore that gets you in. So only you and your cohort and your lecturing staff and course administrators will be on those individual courses. So it's like a SAMP, a safe place to undertake a lot of learning development, learning activities, and and as you develop um, in in terms of that. We tend to find it being used in two ways at UCS. Um, firstly, because we haven't got a large distant learning component, firstly we've got the online admin, admin support. So here you'd be expecting to find things such as your handbooks, your lecture notes, the PowerPoints, reading lists, tasks, acti administrative tasks, activities where you could submit your assignments, you submit your assignments electronically would be in, in terms of that use. And then a, a growing number of people and course teams are revisiting how they could better connect the, the physical teaching, i.e. face-to-face standing in front of you, with the online spaces, online learning spaces such as Learn UCS. And they therefore within those people, with those who are using it, might be setting new activities or quizzes to do or readings or, or videos to watch or something to do between your teaching sessions and then they'll bring it in afterwards or, or refer back to it later on. Um, so there's two really use, uh, two, two predominant uses, the blended model which is of growing of interest importance which gets us, the Elevate team, very excited because that's what we do and the online administrative support function which is always there and will always need to be there. As I say though, once you log in, which you can log in now, um, you might find you, you have no courses listed because we make all courses unavailable. So unless you're teaching, unless the, the lecturers want the course to be available because they're using it, it won't be listed. So the best bet is to have a word with them. If you're a returner, um, just to say that a couple of things have changed since the Woolsey days. Firstly, online submissions has stepped up a gear now uh, and more of your assignments will be going via electronic submission. And secondly, notifications and personalization. This system here, because it's simpler, because we don't have to include all the intranet components, the old Woolsey stuff. Um, you've got a lot more control over how, how you're informed. In fact, email notifications works. So that's Learn to UCS. The other tool we talk about, or may want you to think about, is Mahara, which is mahara.ucs.ac.uk. And to get your username and password, your, well, your username's the same, it's your S number. If you follow the on-screen information about how you reset your password to get in, um, then that'll like, let you access the system. Again, we provide a set of FAQs, and the, or a questions go via the info zone and they, they escalate if, if required. So what is it being used for? How is it likely to be used? It's a growing number of approaches. The personal reflections notes area is an area we, we spend a little bit of time unpicking, which is this idea you need to put stuff somewhere. And this is great because it's password protected and only you can see it unless you want to open it up and share it with other people. Um, so it's a really good place because it contains a file store, it contains a journal area, it contains um, document stores, and as I say, it contains profiles and all sorts of things. Uh, so you can start to build up your your personal notes, reflection area, or have other call your courses or courses are course or courses are developing, and then you may re reuse that later on. There's also the e-portfolio assessment. Some courses were, had been using paper-based portfolio systems and now looking at the opportunity of including or using Mahara as part of the, as part of the portfolio assessment. So this would work in a sense um, transferring many of the activities across. And there's the Graduate Head Start um, scheme that's been um, an opportunity there for graduate skills and transferable skills. It's more difficult in the sense of getting a clear idea what this is being used for because it's, it's about you, the individual. Um, the best place, I think, to start is to literally go in, log in, get your land on that page, create your profile. So if you go to the FAQs, faq.ucs.ac.uk, go into Elevate, and with Elevate you'll find Mahara, the Mahara section. 
um, have a look at the step through guides of how to log in, create a profile, create a blog, create your content stores, um, and then create your portfolio, which is like a page, a web page that brings this all together so that you can then share it with people to see how it works. Um, would be a really, really good place to start. Then we moved away. The conversation moves now away from that. If that's the institutionally owned stuff, which is wonderful, about the technologies for teaching, and there's a large number, an increasing number, of Web2 technologies, or externally hosted. So UCS don't look after these. We haven't got a lot of control over them, but people are using them, and use them a lot. So the classic ones are Facebook, or the ones most people know are Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Lesser extent, WordPress blogs, things like this. And then you get some very niche or de rapidly developing areas which offer incredible functionality that can't be provided by the central systems, um, but you might want them, which you might want to use. So we're really now going to introduce a couple of those and think about how they could be used. But there are caveats, there are health warnings for this. This is, I could say, this is about informal, it's unstructured, it's you control it, it's social, so you can create accounts and share stuff with people. Um, and share it with you and they can share it with you so it's very much around there but there are the health warnings as I say this isn't UCS controlled or owned therefore you need to think about a number of things in terms of your own learning and one of the things to think about or I tend to think about is the long you know if you've just started on a course you may be here for three four years so are those services going to be around in three, four years as they currently are? Think about your intellectual property rights, your copyright. Think very much about your e-safety, your e-profile, how much information you're putting in it, how you're using it, because these things hang around for a very long time. This, 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 the increasingly this, this evidence. Um, where we'd suggest we make reference to is there's some UCS guidelines or guideline and draft version which we put there about using Web two technologies in teaching and learning it's a really good place to start yeah it's a couple of pages at least it'll make you are it'll ask get you to ask a few questions to think about and you can take it on from there so that's the health warning these tools then offer things that we can't provide institutionally and this is is a, a mapping really to um some of the tools and which you might want to do really think, look at a twitter for well really the task how do you keep up to date about using it, what's happening or being discussed within your subject area. This is about your look, your personal learning networks. We think in Twitter, Digo is a is a social bookmarking tool. So it's the idea of how do you find, store, manage, comment, and share web resources with either friends or or colleagues or co within your cohort. So with Digo, we're going to look at there. Mahara. Or we could change it to WordPress, but we're really focusing these sessions on the opportunities of Mahara. So for your note, uh, keeping notes and thought, going thoughts and decisions and, and tracking those. We've got Google, the Google Doc suite of documents, presentations, and spreadsheets and online forms, which looks very much about how you can co-author, write reports, and even write your individual essays. And in a space there that you don't have to worry about uh, software, you don't have to worry about memory sticks and storage, uh, which at the end of the process you can just print or save as a Word document and then upload to Learn UCS. And we also looked at opportunities here for technologies which we don't, which you just raise people to make people aware of at this stage is how do you bring it all together into one place, which is the world is, is, is more and more information coming through. So this is very much a digital literacies area around using iGoogle or NetVibes or something like that. And MindMeister is this idea of what does it always have to be text based? So there's an increasing growth and opportunity here for non text noting tools such as MindMeister, which is a mind mapping tool, or we could look, or you could look at opportunities about video and audio blogging, blog tools. Um, from phone so that you can make it a lot easier and simpler to get information up. Okay, and then we're just going to sort of work through a couple of those. The key point that we took from the take from these slides is think about how we want to use it. This particular case we discussed the idea of staying informed. I don't have through personal learning networks, so this is the fact that I, I, I'm based in Ipswich which is based of course in East, in East Anglia, um, how do I follow what's happening in UK, Europe, US, Australia, etc. Uh, without having to go to Google searching all the time and how do I keep up to date and one of the great ways of doing this is, is developing your personal learning networks using Twitter 
or you could use other tools such as LinkedIn or whatever. It depends on your discipline and where most of your um, your interested part of people you're interested in where they reside. The quote's quite nice because that came from a student last year who she um, attended one of our inductions and was would admit you know, there's a it's on our website the um, the, the 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 case study but she admits that she was. A little bit of a techno foe, but I actually found Twitter incredibly useful at pulling things together and, and within a very niche area. So she was really taken by Twitter, which is brilliant because that's exactly what it's for to do. It's like a, 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 a river of information flowing past that you can sort of try and dip in and manage as you so well. So wish. So we then went through in the session about how you could use Twitter at twitter.com. Uh, create basically encouraging people to create accounts, follow people. The strategy was very much create an account and follow to develop a personal network. Don't necessarily post. So it's not about getting people to follow you. It's more about and who, where you're telling them some donut coffee consumption. It's really a strategy of building your information networks by following other people. So for instance, have a look at the authors on your course or on your reading lists. Google them, find a person, you know, look at this, see their profile, see if they have a Twitter feed or if the department or division or school they're in has one or the organisation they're in has one and then follow that Twitter feed and see what comes from it. And don't be scared this is, uh, of deleting ones that don't deliver um, what you need when you need it. So you prune them back and keep on top of them. Then we looked at a little bit around Digo. Well, we didn't, it depends on the options in the room. But we looked at Digo and very much... Um, as I say, dealing with this, what we used to do on bits of paper or email, this way of collecting, annotating, sharing web resources with people, which is more and more common in group work, um, and would naturally develop, one assumes, into the, into the next section, uh, which is the reflective writing and note-taking. So, for instance, I have found resources, I'm bookmarking them and managing them, I've done some basic annotation, but I want to take it a step further. Or some, I'm in with a group of people and we're sharing these resources and we've located them. We want to take them a step further. So it's using the initial integration of I've got Digo uh, and then I'm going to take it further into something like either Mahara or into Google Docs, which is like an online um, Word document, which again you can collaborate and share. Very, very powerful tool indeed. So if you're not using it already, think look at the as of in the session the great opportunities that Google offers you so you can see how those build up really nicely because it might be that you see a Twitter feed or on your following somebody so they integrate this is what I'm trying to say is you're following Joe blogs or a person in your discipline not Joe blogs but you're following them in your discipline Twitter's only 140 odd characters with a link and then normally the model is some blurb and here's a link you click on the link and you get the more information which normally takes it to somebody's website or blog or a report or something like that you'd bookmark that very nicely in Digo because once it's gone through you know Twitter is just a constant flow of information so it's not very good at storing and managing and searching across your previous posts or receiving so your, your habits would be I'd find it in Twitter I'd mark it in Digo after having looked at it I'd do some annotation I might share it or I'll be looking at somebody else's and then as I need to really develop those ideas and get my teeth into it as an academic exercise, I'm coming through and I'm looking at where do I make my notes. Mahara, very powerful note taking, developing what we call profiles or portfolios or views to share with people, or more of a working space with others would be the Google Docs option um, where you can create something, you can share it. And one of the nice products of the Google when we looked at when we talked this session through is the idea of taking it cradle to grave and the grave being the next stage where you submit it, upload it for assignment or submit it as always an assignment and an e-submission. And that's really in, in, interesting there that you can produce these. So you can get draft comments from friends in Google. You can then automatically see, look, just export it as a Word document to take up to learn new CS for your feedback there. So we had a few strategies as we worked through, which was really nice and very, very interesting. And that was it. And we left it there. And we smiled a lot. And we said that really, well, where next for you? Um, 
all at this stage, even though it, uh, you know we elevate, as I mentioned at the start, is enhancing learning through innovative technologies, which is very much the staff development unit, um, and a little bit around the postgrad areas. We so if you email info for the info zone, anything they all filter through because and uh, it'll come up to us. All of our FAQs are available, and we're trying to put in a number of learning technology surgeries. Uh, you know, they join the induction period, and if they're successful, potentially um, through other periods of the year. Okay.